I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on circle theorems. We'll discuss alternate segment theorem in this particular video. I'll also provide you with a simple proof. Here is a circle with let's say center O. We have a triangle in the circle and you need to note that when we talk about alternate segment theorem, the sides of the triangle will not go through the center, right? Now, here is a tangent. Let's call this point as uh, T. So, TA is tangent to the circle, right? So, we have TA, which is tangent to circle O. Right, so, that is the center O for us. When we say alternate segment theorem, it really means that the angle between the tangent and its chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Now, it's very confusing to figure out which is the alternate segment. So, let me give you an example here. This is the angle between the tangent and the chord, right? So, we are looking into the angle which is between this chord, right? So, that is the chord. And this is the tangent. So, the angle between chord and the tangent is this angle which we are talking about. And when we say alternate segment, how do we figure this out? So, here, look at this. That is the segment, right? Now, look at the angle which is in the triangle right opposite this angle. So, whenever we are saying alternate segment, it is this. Is that clear to you? All right? So, that means within the alternate segment. That is what they mean, right? So, always the angle will be this with that. So, easy way is See the segment in which the angle is formed and right across, right opposite to that, which angle is there? That is the angle which should be equal. Is that clear to you? Right? Now, let us see how to prove it. Right? So, here is a small proof. Simple steps to prove the theorem. We'll do a construction. So, we'll construct Di diameter so from this point A at which this tangent is there we'll draw a line through the center so we have this line through the center O so that's the diameter right so we'll construct a diameter now as soon as you construct this diameter let me call this point as D then what really happens is we get a part which is in semicircle, right? So let me join D to B now. So we construct the diameter A to D, right? So AD. So A is a point of tangency. So from there we have constructed a diameter. And now join db so this results into a right triangle adb right since that is a triangle formed in a semicircle, right? So that is a triangle formed in the semicircle. Does it make sense to you? All right. Now, second, we also know that this angle here is right angle. We know that the angle DAT equals to 90 degrees, correct? 
and this angle DAT is also equal to angle DAB plus BAT. Now that is the angle of our interest, right? Perfect. Now if you look into the triangle ADB, since angle B is 90 degrees, therefore angle ADB plus angle DAB is also equal to 90 degrees, correct? So sum of these two angles is also 90. Now, since we have these two statements, which says statement one, angle DAB plus BAT is equal to 90 degrees and we have here DAB plus ADB equals to 90 degrees, statement two. So that clearly indicates that these two angles should be equal, right? So that means these two angles should be equal. So we get that angle ADB is equal to angle BAT, right? That means what? Angle ADB, ADB is this new angle form. This new angle formed is equal to angle BAT. BAT is the angle with the tangent makes with the chord. Correct? So these two are equal angles. Clear? So we'll call this as our third equation. Right? Now as you can see, this angle is for the arc AB. And that angle at C is also for the same arc AC. Correct? Therefore, this angle should be equal to that angle. Right? So from here, we get angle ACB should be equal to angle ADB. Now, ADB is already equal to BAT, right? So, so we could write this also is equal to angle BAT. Is that clear to you? So, angle BAT is the angle between the tangent and its chord and is equal to the alternate angle in the alternate segment, which is angle C. Do you see that? So that is how we prove it. So we know that this angle is finally equal to that angle. So in fact, these three angles are exactly the same. So I hope these steps are absolutely clear. So the idea here is to understand that whenever we are talking about alternate segment theorem, the triangle in the circle does not include the origin no segment of this triangle or no side of the triangle goes through the center. Then you need to construct from the point of tangency a diagonal and form another triangle and then you can following these three steps prove that the angle between the tangent and the chord are equal, right? So is that clear to you? Now based on this let us have couple of examples. Here we have four examples based on alternate segment theorem. I like you to pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. So that is the angle X which we need to find in figure one. This is the angle X in the next figure, angle Y and Z in the other two, right? So let's begin with the very first one. Here we have a tangent and that is the angle formed with the chord AC and the tangent, right? So this is the angle between the chord and the tangent. Now we need to figure out what this angle is. If you look into the 
alternate segment theorem. So that is the segment and right opposite to that, this is the angle, right? So we know that this angle should be equal to this angle using alternate segment theorem. We are given the angle at the center as 110 degrees. Now we know that if that is the angle in the center, in that case, on the arc, we will form an angle which is half of 110. So this angle is going to be 110 degrees divided by 2 or will be equals to 55 degrees. Correct? Since angle B is 55 degrees, this angle X will also be 55 degrees using the alternate segment theorem. Perfect. So our answer here is that X measurement is equal to 55 degrees. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Now here, in the second example, we have to find this angle X. We are given uh, a triangle ABC within the circle. How do we figure this out? Well, what we can do here is that uh, we know this is the third side of the triangle. So this side should be equal to 180 minus some of these two, right? So we can find angle A. So we can write here that the, the angle CAB should be equal to 180 degrees take away 20 and 40, right? Minus 42. So that gives you, this angle basically gives you uh, the angle as, just a minute, okay. So that gives you 160 minus 42. So from 10, if we take away, we get this, and 5 take away 118 degrees, correct? So, so that is 118 degrees. So this angle for us is 118. Okay. We could also do it in another way using the alternate tangent theorem. Now here, as you can see, the angle formed by the, the tangent is this angle, correct? Now this angle is equal to 20 degrees using the alternate tangent theorem. Okay. So we'll actually show it in two different ways. So this angle basically is 20 degrees. That is 20 degrees, right? So we know that, okay, we know that the angle BA, let's call this point as P. Okay, angle BAP is equal to 20 degrees using alternate segment theorem. Right? Let me write it in short. Now 42 is an external angle. So 42 should be equal to sum of 20 and x, right? So, so we have 42 is equal to 20 plus x since it is an external angle, correct? So external angle is sum of two remote interior angles, right? Ex so external angle. And so from here, we can say x is equals to 42 take away 20, which gives us 22 degrees. You get the idea, right? So, so what we did basically was that we figured this out using alternate segment theorem. So I'd like you to follow these steps to provide this solution since that is of our prime interest, right? So angle 20 is same as angle 20 here, which the tangent forms with the uh, chord AB. And since 42 is an external angle, we have 42 as 20 plus X. Well, you could do 180 minus 42 and then figure this out also. But you save a step if you go like this. So 42 is 20 plus 22, so x is 22 degrees. Clear? Okay. Now here, we are given a triangle and a tangent. So, so let's call this point as, let's say, T. However, that is the center O. We need to find Y. So what should you do here? Well, remember, 
whenever we talk about alternate segment, the triangle is not passing through the origin, right? So what we need to think about is, we need to think about some other point here, right? So, so you could construct, right? Let's say point C. And you know this angle here, is going to be half of the angle at the center. So this is going to be 100 divided by 2 or 50 degrees, just as we did here, right? And this angle is the angle which is the same as the angle which tangent forms with the chord. And so what we get here is that y is equals to 50 degrees. Is that clear to you? Correct. So don't get confused here. If the center is involved, you have to construct another triangle and that angle will be half of the angle formed at the center. Perfect. Now here is the last question. The tangent is actually parallel to one of the sides of the triangle, AC. Now in this case, we could use the properties of parallel lines and the tra transverse lines. So this line and this line is parallel. So this is 70. That has to be 70. Correct. All right. So we get this angle as 70 degrees. Now, since this is 70 and we do have an alternate angle also, look here. This angle is formed in this segment. Correct. And the angle opposite to this has to be same. So using alternate segments, we know this and this are same. So we know this is also 70. Correct? And so using parallel lines, that should be equal to 72. Right? So these two are same because of the parallel lines. So alternate interior angles. Right? So what we have here is two things, alternate interior angles are equal, correct? So that gives you the this right and also this. And now we can find what Z is. So Z definitely is 180 take away 70, take away 70. Is that clear to you? Right? So, so that is how we'll take out. So 70, 70 is 140. So we're left with 40 degrees. So here angle Z is equals to 40 degrees. Is that clear to you? So we found that one of the angle is same because of alternate segment theorem. The other set, because of alternate angles when parallel lines are cut with the transverse lines. And that is how we can actually solve all these questions. So most of the questions based on alternate segment theorems may look like what we have seen here, right? I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.